Welcome to a couple of monkeys. This is a little bit of a different build video. Yes, uh, we're gonna do something uh, quite different. Uh, we are restoring a 18th century pie safe. Our neighbor was going to throw it away after it was damaged in the fire. Along with the fire damage, there was a lot of water damage from the firefighting efforts. This pie safe had a lot of sentimental value, so we decided to put efforts into restoring it. Please enjoy as we restore this piece of history. Okay, first things first, we went ahead and started taking the entire thing apart. Now, I wouldn't have normally done this, but uh, some of the boards on the inside were extremely warped. Uh, they were almost cupped where they had set, had a bunch of water and uh, it had a little bit of mold in it and everything like that. So I needed to get those out and figure out what I was going to do. We started to take the screens off because they were in pretty bad shape. We also needed to take them off because we needed to sand the wood underneath. Now while pulling the project apart, uh, we were able to look at some of the hardware that held a lot of the pieces together. With that, we ended up being able to date the uh, antique furniture by the shape and size of the nails that were in there. Uh, we uh, had dated it to around the 1800s. Uh, they had uh, rectangle and square nails holding the entire piece together. We ended up taking apart the screens, nails, and rest of the pie safe well into the night. And we started the work again in the morning. We started setting up the planer and the new dust collector. We had to cut the shelves in half in order to reduce some of the cupping, as well as to straighten them out and remove some of the water damage. Of course, we went ahead and put everything through the planer until we started getting uh, good material. There was a lot of material to remove and this night wasn't enough. Now the back of the pie safe was made up of very thin shiplap and I was not sure if the planer would take it, but it ended up being just fine. After a round of planing and sanding, this is how the shiplap looked like. After a little bit of research, we believe that the entire pie safe is made out of chestnut. Uh, there was a couple areas that the planer just could not get. Uh, one of them was the screen doors and the other one would be the edges. Now we went ahead and went through all of the screen doors and all of the edges trying to remove any of the material that was bad. I even attempted to use paint stripper, but it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. Ultimately, we ended up using 40 grit sandpaper to remove bulk of the material. After that, we switched to 60 grit sandpaper and repeated the sanding process. The decorative trim on the top had to be sanded by hand. Now I had to join all the boards that I cut for the shelves with the biscuit joiner. I started off 
setting the two boards that I wanted to join together. Then I marked across both of them. Then where I marked, I went ahead and made the biscuit joint. I added glue, then the biscuit, and then I clamped the two boards together. I repeated this process four times. Now we took the boards downstairs for a good coat of polyurethane. I really enjoy how the wood looks after we got done putting the polyurethane on. And now I had to put it all together again. We were able to find reproduction wrought nails online in order to replace the rusted ones that were in the cabinet. The assembly was actually pretty excellent. All of the holes were already practically drilled. I just wanted to go over them one more time just to make sure I wouldn't split the boards. The process was basically drill nail, drill nail, drill nail. I didn't have to level, I didn't really have to do anything. Now when attaching the doors, I did end up having a quite a lot of adjustment issues. I also replaced the flathead screws on the door panels with Phillips. I had to ground off the top of the Phillips in order for the cabinet to shut correctly. There was a portion of the back of the pie safe that was completely broken. To fix this, I replaced the piece and did it in epoxy pour. While the epoxy was curing, I did the rest of the shiplap. We were not able to find similar to the original nails um, inside the one, half, one and a half inch, but we were able to find um, rod rose head one and a half inch nails. Which ended up looking really beautiful. And now we had some work to do on the computer. Since we took the screens apart, we decided to replace it with some custom screens. So we asked the owner if she wanted something specific on the screens. She wondered if we could maybe do a lotus flower design. And we said, you got it. We started our sketch on ViaCAD. We wanted it to be through cuts, so I had to be very specific on how I designed it measurements of the screens and we entered them all into the CAD so everything would be cut out at once. We positioned the flowers so we wouldn't be able to see any of the wood on the outside. We exported the design to easel and set up the settings for the machine. The cut time ended up being insanely long. There was a lot of small details that I could have probably left out of the project but it ended up looking really nice at the end. After the panels were cut out, I went ahead and cleaned them up with the sander and Dremel. After placing a few coats of polyurethane on the screens, I went ahead and went over it again with the Dremel. With the help of a brad nailer, I installed the screens. And now the final piece is complete. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and check out our social media pages in the link in the descriptions below. This whole project took around 25 hours to complete. There was a lot of small items that never really got into this video, but as you can see there's a couple latches, there's a piece of cherry that uh, helps the locking mechanism, and there's a brand new locking mechanism on the door. We also placed some levelers uh, feet for the entire coffee table so it'll sit level on any surface that the owner puts it on.